discussion on the role of Valsalva maneuver in cardiology. The initial description of Valsalva maneuver was published by Valsalva in 1704. It was first expiratory effort against the closed glottis nose and mouth lasting for a few seconds. The maneuver was employed with the aim of expelling foreign bodies or exudates from the middle ear. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Even today, otolaryngologists use variations of the maneuver very often. Weber in 1851 detailed the cardiovascular changes associated with maneuver, making it useful for diagnostic purpose. Hence, some authors prefer to call it as Valsalva Weber maneuver. The classical four phases of Valsalva maneuver and its hemodynamic effects were described by Hamilton and colleagues in 1936. In 1947, Rushma made the assessment objective by expiratory straining against the mercury column of a sigma manometer. Later, this was changed to an analog manometer for better convenience. The subject is asked to take a full inspiration and blow against the resistance of a mouthpiece connected to an aneroid manometer to maintain a pressure of 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury for 15 to 20 seconds. It is then released and normal respiration resumed without gasping. Venous return decreases during the strain phase and reduces blood pressure which triggers baroreceptor mediated increase in heart rate. After cessation of straining, there is abrupt reversal resulting in overshoot of arterial pressure which is known as Valsalva overshoot. This leads to baroreceptor mediated bradycardia. Finally, the hemodynamic changes return to basal levels. While feeling the pulse during a Valsalva maneuver, it is easy to appreciate the bradycardia during phase 4. Classical four phases of Valsalva maneuver can be better documented by invasive intra-arterial pressure recording along with electrocardiographic monitoring. Phase 1 is associated with transient rise in arterial pressure and bradycardia at the beginning of strain due to increase in intrathoracic pressure. Phase 2 is the maintenance of straining with progressive decrease in arterial pressure and reflex tachycardia. Phase 3 is release of strain with a transient dip in arterial pressure with tachycardia. Phase 4 is the phase of post-training arterial pressure overshoot associated with bradycardia. Valsalva maneuver is used in clinical cardiology for ascertaining the origin of various cardiac murmurs. Typical example is differentiating the murmurs of aortic stenosis and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Murmur of aortic stenosis decreases due to the reduced left ventricular end diastolic volume. But a reduced end diastolic volume worsens the obstruction in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and accentuates the murmur. Therapeutic use of Valsalva maneuver in termination of supraventricular tachycardia is well known. Sometimes it is useful in elucidating the mechanism of supraventricular tachycardia. Valsalva maneuver is used in the assessment of cardiac autonomic function. Valsalva ratio is the ratio of maximal tachycardia to maximal bradycardia induced by the maneuver. RR intervals from an ECG monitor can be used for this purpose. Valsalva delay is the time for the maximum RR interval variation from phase 3 to phase 4. Choir wave response is the absence of the typical declining slope of the arterial pressure in the strain phase. This is because the preload of an overloaded left ventricle does not decrease significantly. Arterial pressure increases with strain and returns to normal on release of strain. Here are the first set of journal references on Valsalva maneuver. Second set of references. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.